much of this is um, Mr. Shadow from the Deacon Deck Regiment with another Deck Tech video for you. Um, this time I'll be doing my modern deck for the tournament we're running this semester at Deacon Uni. It's um, Blue Black Mill. It's not the kind of mill that you see every day involving, you know, just straight glimpse the unthinkables and all that. Um, it's actually token based mill. And I think some of you will like the name I gave the deck. It's. <clears throat> what I've done is I've called it. You know what really grinds my gears? And I'm sorry, but if you can't guess what the deck is going to do just from the name, seek help. That That's the best I can do for you. Um, so, let's get started. Land base is basically three islands. Oops. Three swamps, two dark steel shores, two creeping tar pits, four watery graves, four drowned catacombs, and four demir aqueducts. <clears throat> now the dark steel shores are really good for when I'm start for when I've got them in my opening hand. I can drop them, bounce them for an aqueduct, and then get that out ASAP. Um, the aqueduct, it does slow me down by a turn, but it gives me access to both colors in, well, from one land, so that's pretty good, as far as I'm concerned. Watery Grave, Standard Shock Land, and Drowned Catacomb, Standard uh, Corset Dual Land. Not much else to say about the mana base. Um, oh, uh, there is one thing though. Um, I'm sure some of you are wondering why I'm running creeping tar pits. Um, the reason is when I first built the deck, I was running um, Call of the Nightwing with Cipher. So what I'd do is I'd Cipher onto this little guy when uh, I've animated him, swing, unblockable, get a token, and then you know, the cipher would stay on him. But given that I've taken the cipher out, it's basically just there to take up a land slot and having a second having a, another dual land does help. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <clears throat> okay, so creatures. Um so in terms of creatures I've got four night veil spectres. Four consuming aberrations and one Snapcaster Mage. Now the Night Veil Spectres are there for mirror matches and flying defense. Um, I really wouldn't use them for anything else other than chump blocking and you know just um, having some board presence. Uh, Consuming Aberration is there to accelerate the mill and act as an alternate as an alternate win. Well, alternate win con. Um, I'm not a big fan of beat down as a win con. I prefer to go for slightly uh, different win cons. Mill being one of them, obviously. But he's in there because, you know, when I'm milling, he just gets freaking huge and can beat your face in if I can't mill you out in time. And Snapcaster Mage is pretty much in there for tech. He wasn't actually in the deck originally. I just, like, I happened to open him in a box of Innistrad, so I was like, sweet, let's see how this goes. He fits in perfectly. So, more often than not, um, combo piece, combo is going off, and I will drop him to flashback, glimpse the unthinkable, or even mind funeral, just to get a few more tokens onto the field. Uh, you'll see how I do that. In just a minute, I will cover the combo as soon as I'm done with the mill tech. Well, the combo is what I'll cover last. Because that's where I need to spend most of the time talking. Um, so, four glimpse the unthinkables. Went to um, instants and sorceries. Four mind funerals. And three increasing confusions. I said instants and sorceries, realistically I should probably just say mill tech, but oh well. So, four glimpsy unthinkables, I don't 
think I have to say it's fairly standard to have four of these in a deck. Unless you're building budget, in which case, fair enough, use breaking and entering. Um, speaking of breaking and entering, I'm actually planning on using this in this deck just as soon as the tournament's over, because, you know, rulings, we can't use them. We can't use any Dragon's Maze cards in the tournament this semester. But I'll find them a home soon enough. Um, Mind Funeral, the original grind card. Well, no, I, I said something like this before in a flashback, with the flashback mechanic. I probably shouldn't say that. What I will say is, it's one of the first grind cards, um, and it's pretty damn good for what it does. I mean, three mana to mill till your opponent hits four, or hits four lands, that's pretty, that's very good. And it's really, really good for the combo. Um, <clears throat> It's a bit hit and miss, but, you know, more often than not, I'm going to get something off for the combo. And increasing confusion, um, basically pump X into it, and they mill X, flashback it for the same cost, but when it's flashbacked, they mill double X. So it's nice for, you know, a late game mill, if I've got nothing left to use. And it happens to be in the bin, which 90% of the time... I'll just go, what I'll do is, early game, if it's in my hand, I'll go, increasing confusion for zero. Cool, it's in the bin. Later on in the game, when I've got six mana floating, when I've got six mana, six lands, flashback it, boom, you mill ten. It's, glimpse, it's a weird little card, but it works. <clears throat> okay. In terms of Planeswalkers, I have Jace and Jace Valerian and Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Um, most people use a combo of Liliana Vess and Jace Valerian because they can tutor for what they need. Uh, I don't really need to tutor. Ninety percent of what I do is I play for the late game anyway, so chances are I'll draw what I need anyway. Um, so Jace, I use him just to draw cards. I rarely ever use his ultimate. Um, Liliana is in here for control, neg 2, target player sacks a creature, and neg 1, no, plus 1, each player discards a card. That doesn't really hit me hard, because when I use that ability, by that time I usually have what I need on the field, so I'm not too fussed about dropping things into the bin. Um, so now we come to the combo pieces. <coughs> Okay, so without further ado, four reassembling skeletons, four undercity informers, four undead alchemists, and four copies of Rise and Fall. Um, so reassembling skeleton. Well, okay, I'll explain the main part of the combo. Um, so these two are the main parts of the combo. Uh, under City Informer and Undead Alchemist. So Undead Alchemist, if a zombie I control would deal combat damage to a player, instead they put that many cards from the top of their library into the graveyard, and whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from his or her library, they exile it, and I put a 2-2 zombie on the field. 2-2 black zombie to be precise. Um... And then there's Undercity Informer, pay one sack a creature, target player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land and puts those cards into her, his or her library. So he's basically pay one sack a creature, grind one. So I'm sure people can see the combo. What happens is I... Oh, wait. And then there's um, Reassembling Skeleton. He's the catalyst for the whole thing. So, once I have these three on the field, or even, well, yeah, if I have these three on the field, I'll use his effect, pay one, sack him, they grind one, any creatures hit the grave, any creatures that hit the grave from their library get exiled, I get a 2-2 zombie, so, pay one, sack, and I get a zombie, I will then, <coughs> well, 
for each creature. So I have milled one creature. I will then pay one sack the zombie. So I have milled two creatures. I get two zombies, and I keep going until eventually I've either run out of mana or I've milled them out. So that's the combo. Like <clears throat> it's very centric. It's very much centered around these two, and that's why rise and fall are in here. So I never. I can't cast fall because it's red black. The deck is blue black. So I cast rise. Return target creature card in a grave and target creature in play to their owner's hands. So this is recursion for when one of these two dies. So once the combo pieces are gone, you can it's safe to say that I'm fairly screwed. But with Rise, I can fix that. Yeah? So it's a fairly simple combo to pull off. And it's actually very, very fun. Um, like, just last, just this week, on Wednesday, I had to play my official tournament game. And, um, <clears throat> I ended up paired against a original Rav Boris player. And, game two, he got me down to nine life. And then I finally got the combo going. I finally got the combo going and pretty much swarmed zombies. Yay, zombies! So I swarmed zombies, he couldn't hit me, and then I pretty much milled him to death. It was grouse. Um, <clears throat> now, for most of my other decks, I don't have a sideboard for this one because it's an official deck. I do have a sideboard. So I may as well show you guys that while I'm at it. Making fairly good time, given how long my other videos have gone. Um, so, four mesmeric orbs to deal with aggro decks and decks that tap out. Jace memory adept, aggro Jace, just to help speed the combo along. Surgical extraction to, re to eliminate troublesome cards that hit the bin. Um, like Rest in Peace, Rest in Peace shuts this deck down, so does um, Leyline of the Void, which is why I wouldn't run either of them. Lich's Mirror, pay 5, and as soon as I die, I get a free re I get a restart. So, that's pretty good, considering. Um, I'd have to play against a player that has little board presence, and be able to recover fairly quickly, but given that everything in the deck is a 2 or 3 drop, um, you know, minus a couple of things here and there. Um, it's doable. Uh, Heartless Summonings. Pretty much just to speed up the combo, to speed up the rate at which I can play the combo pieces. Uh, that actually shuts down Reassembly Skeleton, but, you know, take them out for, you know, Mesmeric Orb. And they will do the work for him. <coughs> um... Now that's actually supposed to be another copy of Temporal Extortion. Um, so when I play it, any player may half their life total uh, round it up to counter it. If they don't, I take it. I take an extra turn. <clears throat> um, considering that I'm a mill deck, a lot of people are going to be doing that, which is why um, it's pretty good to drop this and then drop Consuming Aberration or Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Right after playing this, um, so Dusk Mantle, I'll, I wouldn't use the four cost ability, just the three cost, just to speed up the game. If I can't be bothered milling them out, um, so that's the deck. Um, <clears throat> I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, please comment, leave any feedback as to how I could have made the video a little bit better. Um, I, to show just how fun the deck can be to play and to play and play against, I'm hoping that in the next coming, in the coming weeks, I can record a match and show, and show you guys what I mean and how it works. Um, but yeah, everyone I've played against this deck with, um, they've all said it's, it's fun, it's ridiculous 
and it just turns games around when I need it to. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so have a good night, YouTube, and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about us, and if you're a Deakin student, feel free to come and you know hit up the club. Uh, otherwise, ninety percent of the time you'll find well, not ninety percent of the time. Saturdays you'll find us at Good Games Blackburn for the Card Fight Vanguard tournament, uh, and you'll see us and you'll see a few of us at the um, pre-releases for Magic. Um, so, yeah, if you feel like meeting up, if you feel like meeting up with us and just having a game, go for it. Um, so, again, thank you, YouTube. And good night.